Hello gamers, break down the first DLC for the brutal zombie survival game State of Decay has been released. If the main campaign is an apple, then the breakdown DLC is definitely an orange. Both fruits, both delicious, but both different. Crappy metaphors aside, the DLC is fun and offers a challenge that was really lacking in the main campaign. It is my hope that you will gain some valuable knowledge and insight and be able to survive the breakdown with this guy. Your first loadup of the DLC will start you at level 1 with a random hero. You will also see that there are various heroes that can be unlocked at different levels by completing certain challenges. If you are starting out, you won't have access to the other heroes and will have to select a random one instead. A Take a few times to re-roll your character. Like you, know you do not want to have a crappy character starting out with bad stats. In. So what are some good stats to look for? Great reflexes is an amazing trait to have and is absolutely invaluable later on. I don't really care for Powerhouse that much for the simple fact that a fully maxed out character with great reflexes gains 100% stamina regen. And they also have a very strong kick they can unlock that will instantly knock down zombies, including ferals. So definitely look for great reflexes. Improved cardio is also really viable. Um, cardio levels up a lot slower than wits and fighting typically, and having a bonus to it will help you get it up there much quicker. There are also some traits that will allow the character to run a certain part of the base, such as a pharmacist or doctor being able to man the medical area. You'll want to try and get some of these characters and bring them with you to each stage. You probably won't be able to spawn and have a whole lot of luck to really get those, but if you can, then definitely take that character. So if those are some of the things that you do want, then what is it that you do not want? You do not want any character that you have to babysit, um, avoid characters with traits that cause negatives. Bum knee, absent-minded, coward are among some of them. At higher levels, you will not have the space to bring lousy characters with you, and quite frankly, they're just a detriment. So if you get one of these whenever you first start, just re-roll it. And if you get these people at later difficulties, I would probably look to kill them off or get rid of them otherwise. So you've loaded into the world for the first time. First thing you'll see is several locations on the map with survivors. Picking a place will establish your first base. The first order of this will be to check your new survivor stats. From the moment you start, you need to start planning who to take with you in the RV. Of all the locations, I like the Savini household the most. It has six outpost slots and is located in the always well-stocked town of Justice. Remember the point of breakdown is to keep on going. So don't feel like you have to move to the warehouse or to the fairgrounds, because that will take extra time and resources to get there. After playing for about an hour or so, Lily will radio you with the RV location. Going to the location will add the RV to the facility, and you will also need to fix up the RV. Sometimes it might be the tires, sometimes it might be a decontamination, the engine fix. This will cost resources, and there is also a chance you need to find a component. Similar to whenever you build a facility, you need super glue or a punching bag or something like that. You can put five characters on the RV, plus the one that you're using, and Lily. Once you have the RV complete, go to your journal and open it up. Click on the RV in the facility list, and make sure you put on the characters that you want to take by pressing E. Anything you have stashed will transfer with you, but keep in mind that while you can stack bullets higher than 60 in the stash, exiting the game and reloading will cause all of the extra bullets to disappear, so don't put more than 60 in there at a time. So with all that out of the way, I'll give you some tips that I've picked up during my playtime that will hopefully help you live. Stamina and stamina management is crucial. At higher levels, it won't be uncommon to have suddenly a dozen or more zombies descend on you at once. You can't easily dispatch all of them with low stamina, and you may need to run, so high stamina is helpful. The dojo adds stamina and vitality and is a worthwhile addition to the household. Plus, you can also get extra ammo from it by training outsiders. I don't normally build a kitchen, but the Savini house comes with it, so you can also get more stamina from a feast. Look for abilities. Powerhouse and Great Reflexes can greatly increase your odds of survival, and I personally look for Great Reflexes, as I mentioned before. The Stamina Regen coupled with the Instant AoE Knockdown is amazingly useful. Plus you can cancel the kick by hitting the Execute button before the animation finishes, killing a zombie quickly and saving you time. The next thing is to start out ahead. When you go to a new level, you start with low influence. You can help fix this by taking a powerful or expensive item from the map before and bringing it with you and instantly putting it into the stash in the new level. This will help you establish outposts, fix the RV, and fix up your house That's much it. quicker. We're full up. Unless someone wants to ride on the roof. Guns. Gunshots will draw a lot of zeds in higher difficulties. Put a silencer on the damn thing or don't use it at all. Or else you might be in for much more than you bargained for. Take care of your people. By your people, I mean the ones that you will take with you. Give them a melee weapon and go ahead and give them a good gun and silence it. If they get up in the watchtower, they will fire silent shots and murder everything that gets close to home. And if they have a loud ass gun, they will also pull everything in the neighborhood. 
I had this happen once when I was loading up the RV and my watchtower guy was loudly blasting at zombies. I ended up having one of my best guys get killed by zombie hordes because so many of them got drawn in and I couldn't save him. I was very, 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 very pissed. Zombie management. Armored Zeds are a pain in the ass and at higher difficulties, they will almost always beeline for you and will attempt to grapple you, which will deal a massive amount of damage. They're also much more plentiful than in lower difficulties. The grapple bites hurt really badly and they leave you exposed for extra damage from surrounding zombies. Pace yourself and remember, as you expend stamina, you will have part of your bar turn yellow. This part takes more time to regen than the non-yellow part, which will put you in a bad place if you burn through all of your stamina and have no food on you. Use heroes. Heroes have set starting abilities and stats, and some of them are a lot better than others. Doc Hansen, for example, has a godlike medical call that you can utilize if you get low in health and injured. I can talk you through it. Put pressure on it. Hard pressure. Don't just half-ass it. That feels a lot better. My pleasure. While you may want to grab all the heroes, keep in mind only five people can go with you to the next level at a time. So pick and choose who you take carefully. Leave the dead weight behind. Don't bring crappy characters with bad stats along. Leave them in the dust. I would suggest always bring a medic with you, and I personally always bring someone who can man the dojo. I also have a researcher. I got extremely lucky on this playthrough, and with the first group of survivors I met in level 1, I found a character who has medical knowledge and an electrician giving me a great deal of flexibility because she can do the machine shop or be a medic. This is pretty rare, so don't count on having such good luck. But if you get someone who has two skills, guard them with your life. Outposts. Utilize all of your outpost slots and try and arrange them in a way that protects your main base. You won't always be able to do this because of the randomness of item spawns, but try and do the best you can. The next thing is Molotovs. Don't be afraid to use Molotovs. They're cheap, silent, and you can take out entire hordes with them if you're careful. next thing is not to go alone. It's dangerous out there. What you can do is you can start missions for other survivors, such as in this case where I'm supposed to go clear an infestation. Rather than go straight to the infestation, I go into this fast food joint and start looting it for food. While my friends watch my back. With that said, I have a few more tips that I'll call scumbag tactics. I discovered these while playing through Breakdown, and I by no means will claim credit for being the first to discover them. So it's maybe stuff you already know, but I will warn you that two of these tactics make gathering resources significantly quicker and more time efficient. But again, it is kind of scummy. So if you don't want to hear that and don't want to ruin it, then thanks for watching and please like subscribe to the video. But if you would like to see what I'm talking about, then stay tuned and we'll talk about it in a few seconds. Double resources. This is the best of the three. So you just finished searching a building and have discovered it has a nice resource, in this case materials. Call home and have Lily dispatch a runner. Then right after she confirms the runner is inbound, take the resources and run it home. You'll see your runner start heading for the building. Fast forward a little bit and the runner will run the resource home, effectively doubling your haul. This is a very scumbag tactic and maybe an exploit, but I'm so overgathering that I have zero qualms about using it. As a little addendum to that, you can also do the same thing with a recently taken outpost. If you take an outpost that still has a resource sitting on it, you can also call runners to the outpost, take the outpost resource yourself, and then still get double while getting an outpost out of it. It's done. There you go. Don't say I never gave you nothing. Outpost resources. This is another resource one. So when we get to an established outpost, the outpost will set up with the first resource listed if there is more than one, or we'll take the last remaining resource. For this to work, at least one resource must I'll remain. Call in Lily and set up an outpost. We'll You'll see the outpost be set up and the resource will be flagged. Take the resource result. and run it home. You'll we'll see the outpost yeah. resource is still oh, there. You know. Stuff. This last tip I don't really consider that scummy, but depending on your view of the game, you might. This can become a major problem later on. It's keeping your runners alive. So if you have a runner who's running resources or just out doing whatever the hell it is they're doing, They'll usually brave the streets by themselves. At times, particularly when they are leaving the safe zone of the base or returning, they may get attacked by a load of zombies. Runners will not die or be knocked down if they are not in your line of sight. But if you can see them fighting, they can take damage and they can also be killed. I'm guessing this has something to do with the fact that if you can see them, you're kind of expected to help them. And if they could die when they're off screen, that would piss off a lot of people. Take advantage of it whenever you can and just run away from your team if they're down. They'll survive and they'll get along on their own just fine. Bonus tip. If you go to your user data folder within your Steam installation, you can copy the saved data and effectively back up your game in event that anything bad happens. This is probably the most scumbag tactic of them all, 
because part of the suspense of state of decay is not knowing what's around the next corner, and backing up your save effectively removes that element. With that last tip, we have come to the end of the guide. I hope you find this useful. Please remember to like, subscribe to the channel if you like anything that we do, and leave comments in the video or on our Steam guide if you have any questions or any other good insights to share. This is Axiom with Good Time Gaming. Remember to always have a good time gaming.